Judges of the Court of Appeals of Virginia, Chief Judge Huff presiding. Thank you. Please be seated. <laughs> oh yay, oh yay, oh yay. Silence is commanded on pain of imprisonment while the honorable judges of the Court of Appeals of Virginia are sitting. All persons having business with this court will draw near and give their attention. Any having pleas to enter or suits to prosecute, let them come forward and they shall be heard. God save the Commonwealth in this honorable court. Thank you, sir. The Court of Appeals of Virginia today convenes in special session for the investiture of the Honorable Mary Grace O'Brien as the 37th judge in the history of the Court of Appeals. We open with the uh, Joint Public Safety Honor Guard presenting the colors. If you will, please stand and then remain standing while the Honorable Craig Johnson, Chief of Chief Judge of the 31st Judicial Circuit leads us in the pledge. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. May we remain standing for the invocation offered by Sister Cecilia Dwyer, prioress of the Benedictine Sisters of Bristow, Virginia. In the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Gracious God, you alone tend to our world with justice. Send your Holy Spirit and bless the work of the Honorable Mary Grace O'Brien. May she continue to serve your people with grace and humility and seek the truth with courage and fidelity. Loving God and Judge O'Brien, we see a zeal for justice, a passion for objectivity, and a fervor for impartiality. With an understanding heart, may she turn to you for guidance as she is ever mindful that all power and wisdom comes from you. We ask this through the intercession of our Lord Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. <clears throat> on behalf of the judiciary and my colleagues on the Court of Appeals, I welcome each of you to this special session of the court. We appreciate that so many people have taken time from your daily lives to participate in this special event in the life of Mary Grace O'Brien and in the history of this court. Everyone here, of course, is a special and honored guest of the court, but the court would like to specifically recognize several guests as uh, elected officials. And let me say in advance, if I omit anyone by inadvertence, please uh, accept, my forgive accept my apologies. Uh, Senator Charles Colgan is uh, with us today. Thank you, Senator. Delegate Jackson Miller, 
was in he's here very good excellent thank you I'm, I'm relieved thank you sir <laughs> the Commonwealth Attorney Paul B Ebert sir uh, Chief Deputy Terry Friendly of the Sheriff's Department thank you sir from the uh, city of Mo city of Manassas the mayor Harry Parrish the third Parrish and from the town of Dumfries uh, Councilwoman William Murphy, Count Councilman William Murphy, <laughs> sorry, thank you. And from the Prince William County Board of Supervisors, Mr. John Jenkins, thank you, sir. We also uh, have uh, family members here, and I wish to uh, extend a special welcome to uh, Judge O'Brien's family members, beginning with her husband, Kevin Casey, Esquire, her children, Monica and Patrick Casey. Judge O'Brien's uh, in-laws, uh, Captain Richard Casey and Barbara Casey are with us as well. Welcome, glad you're here. A judicial investiture is emblematic of the genius of our founding fathers in creating three separate and distinct branches of government. We'll see examples of the interplay between these branches in this investiture ceremony. The investiture is a public ceremony of an individual who has been elected to judicial office by the General Assembly pursuant to Article 6, Section 7 of the Virginia Constitution, and then commissioned by the governor pursuant to Article 6, Section 9 of the Virginia Constitution and then takes the constitutionally required oath of office pursuant to Article 2, Section 7 of the Virginia Constitution. Once the elected and commissioned judge has taken the oath of office, she is then adorned with a garment or vestment, the robe, as a public symbol of her constitutionally acquired authority. The court now recognizes for remarks, for special remarks, of E. Allen Newcomb, Esquire. First, let me say thank you. Judge O'Brien and I started here about the same time. It's in 1985. The talk of the town was this building. It was brand new. And we had new careers and new families. Before I start to speak of Judge O'Brien, I'd like to take a moment and I'd like to acknowledge Judge O'Brien's parents, the late Gerald J. O'Brien and Mrs. Patrick O'Brien Twist of Buffalo, New York. They enjoyed and educated seven children. When I say educated, let me read you this list. Two PhDs, one MBA, a master's in engineering, two lawyers, and a double master's. As Kevin said, you need to go to the Christmas dinner to believe it's true. <laughs> <laughs> I acknowledge the twist name in Mrs. Patrick O'Brien's because of the importance to the family now existing. After the passing of Judge O'Brien's father, Mrs. O'Brien married David Twist, who has since passed, and the two families have become fully integrated. Welcome members of the Twist family. Judge O'Brien's husband, as has been noticed, Kevin is here, and the two children, Monica and Patrick. Both children are honor students. Both children are rising third year students. Monica is at the University of Virginia. Patrick is at Paul VI High School in Fairfax. Monica <coughs> is going to extend her studies to Europe this summer and Patrick intends to continue to participate in at least one of his three sports. Judge O'Brien left Buffalo for Syracuse, and she attended the Lemoyne College, a Jesuit college in Syracuse, New York. It's a small college, definitely a Jesuit college. <laughs> <laughs> and she graduated with a degree in English, and it comes as no surprise with honors. Also of note, she was invited to and did participate in the Alpha Sigma Nu fraternity. It is a Jesuit fraternity 
that is dedicated to scholarship, loyalty, and service. In 1980, she left New York and arrived, I know that's not funny, in Lexington, Virginia. <laughs> There, she attained her law degree from the Washington Lee University, obtaining her degree in 1983. While she was at Washington and Lee, she also achieved, had achievements. She became what is known as a Burke Scholar. A Burke Scholar is awarded to third-year students. She was one of eight. And they then, in turn, teach legal research to first-year students. While she was there, she won awards in counseling and in moot court competitions. She also volunteered. She volunteered at Western State Hospital. Recognizing her talent, the Honorable Roscoe B. Stevenson, Jr., Justice of the Supreme Court of Virginia, selected her as his judicial law clerk. She clerked at the Supreme Court of Virginia from 1983 to 1985. In 1985, this county was changing. It had been basically a thinly populated suburb of Fairfax, but it was going to change. Paul Ebert saw the change coming, and he went out then and recruited a class a class of lawyers that he knew he would need to meet the demands of this changing county. And this, let me tell you the class that Judge O'Brien came with, the Honorable William D. Hamlin, Justice Leroy Millett, Jim Willett, Richard Conway. And in 1985, she began litigating in these courts and litigating in the informal way that we all do in those hallways. And for 16 years, she came and went out of every court, and her litigation skills were recognized by Mr. Ebert, and she became a special prosecutor in cases in Fauquier, Spotsylvania, Warren, and Frederick County. And while she prosecuted, she became specialized in felony drug cases and adult sexual offense cases. In 2001, she received her first elevation, and she was elected for her first term to the Juvenile and Domestic Relations District Court of Prince William County. She was reelected in 2007. While at the District Court, the Juvenile and Domestic Relations District Court, she served as a drug court judge and the chief judge. May I mention the drug court judge? <clears throat> in our court system, the juvenile court system, within it, it is responsible for juveniles. It is responsible for delinquent juveniles. The drug court is the place they send juveniles that other courts have already decided should be sent away. And it's up to the drug court with an intensive probation to make every possible effort without endangering the community to keep the juvenile in the community if at all possible. In 2008, she was elevated to be the first woman circuit court judge of the 31st Judicial Circuit, serving as chief judge from 2012 to 2014. While a judge, she could serve the judiciary by being a member of the model jury instructions and the advisory committee for judicial mentoring, where she also mentored. After becoming a judge, she continued to serve the bar. She was a member of the Board of Governors for the Educational Committee, a member of the Family Law Section for the Virginia State Bar, and she has remained a dedicated member of the Virginia Women's Attorney Association, Prince William County. Personal thought. I've had the good fortune for over 30 years now to see her as a wife, a mother, a lawyer, and a judge. And the one thing 
that constantly has impressed me is that she carries about her an interconfidence that allows her to always lead off each encounter that she has respecting those around her. She does not wait to be respected. It is clear that the only reason you need to receive her respect is to be in her presence. Since 1985, day in and day out, month in and month out, year in and year out, witness interview after witness interview, trial preparation after trial preparation, motion to compel after motion to compel, <laughs> objection after objection, ruling after ruling, she has consistently led with respect. No one need ask. Respect was automatic. And for that reason, she has earned our respect. She no longer needs the trappings of power. We stand, listen, and obey without a bailiff or a robe or a gavel. <laughs> I'm not talking about civility. Respect is more than a subset of good manners. Respect, civility can hide, and civility and disrespect can and often do <clears throat> coexist. Respect reveals. It reveals the true value that a person holds for someone else. In this courtroom right now, it's very awkward for me to look at you. My back is usually in this direction. <laughs> and in this room, with lawyer O'Brien and Judge O'Brien, I've seen people lose their life, their fortune, and their child. And the pressure at times is immense right here in this room. And it is so immense that the people themselves almost during the process seem to take on an exterior or different character. And there always is that moment where you're worried that the person will remain in control. And over the years that I have seen her, when she presents this respect, it gives dignity and esteem to the people that come in front of her. And it doesn't matter to her that you're the defendant or you're the victim. You receive from her respect and she has given <coughs> respect so freely regardless of a person's station education or status that Mary Grace O'Brien became she is and she will remain one of the most respected judges of this courthouse so with pride, one of the 31st. We're proud that one of our own is being invested as a judge for the Court of Appeals of Virginia, the Honorable Mary Grace O'Brien. Thank you, Mr. Newcomb, and as you mentioned one of our own, I was reminded that I did miss one special guest, and it is one of our own. Our senior judge, Rosemarie Annunziato, is with us this, this afternoon as well. Thank you for being here. Now the, the uh, court would uh, ask that the Honorable uh, Charles J. Colgan of the Senate of Virginia uh, offer any remarks that he sees fit. Yes, sir. I guess if I was to name my best friends in this room, I'd hope I'd have a lot, but I do know I'd have one really good one. That was my, one of my dearest best friends, a guy named Alan Newcomb. 
who came to this microphone a little while ago and swiped everything that I had written out in <laughs> days. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'll forgive him for that, but you know, next time he gets my bill. You know. <laughs> so it's really it, it's an honor, of course, to 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 stand here and 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 take someone like my, like Mary Grace O'Brien and talk about her and praise her for all the, the, the praise that she deserves. I don't, I don't think we could, we could re reach that pinnacle. Mr. Mr. Kennedy, Mr. Newcomb couldn't do it, but uh, hopefully all of us together can. So I hope uh, somewhere along the way we might find a chance to do that. Uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not going into my uh, material as, as I'd planned, but I do want to make just, just a couple of, of just a few, few uh, small remarks. One is, <coughs> Concerns my dear friend Doggett Harry Parrish, who is no longer with us, but of course spent many, many years in, in this city and in, 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 this, in this community. Harry Parrish was a, a great friend of the, of, the, of, the, of the courts, this court system, and he was also a great friend of, of Mary Grace Bryan. Matter of fact, he was one, of, he considered her to be one, I know, considered her to be one of his closest friends, and I think that she was, because he and I many times talked about her and, and the great progress that she made. So rather than take a whole lot more of your time, I know Jackson uh, is, is, is waiting to hear, is waiting to, waiting to, to, to address you, and uh, if he can come up 95 doing that kind of speed, uh, <laughs> he, he ought to, he ought to get, get through this in, in speech in no time at all. So, that's, that's <laughs> Thank you, Senator Colgan. The court now recognizes the Honorable Jackson H. Miller from the Virginia House of Delegates to uh, make uh, remarks and to uh, present the commission. Yes, yes, sir, please. Uh, thank you, Your Honor, ladies and gentlemen, but, but most especially thank you, Judge O'Brien. This is uh, one of the greatest honors I've received since being in the legislature is to be able to speak at the in investiture of a judge, and uh, I, I greatly appreciate it. It's very kind of you. Um, it, it's been many years since I've had to speak in a courtroom uh, since I left the Prince William County Police Department where I worked for Chief Dean. And at that time, I was hoping I would never have to speak in front of a courtroom again because it would have been a really bad thing if I did. <laughs> uh, but, but this is not a really bad thing. This, this, is, this is the scenario I did not think about. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I also want to include Mary Grace. Uh, I know Delegate Randy Minshew, a, a law, a classmate of yours, I believe, is here. I know he was very close behind me. Perhaps he did not make it. Uh, oh, he's out in the hallway. Delegate uh -huh. Minshew, your classmate, is out in the hallway. Senator Reeves uh, was about five or six miles behind me uh, <laughs> on 95, and 95 was a parking lot. So I'm, he wanted to be here, and I don't think he's been able to make it yet. So he wanted to thank you as well. Uh, Delegate Reeves, same situation as myself, was a Prince William County police officer uh, well before he became a member of the state legislature. Both of us had the great opportunity and honor uh, to work with, uh, at the time, uh, Assistant Commonwealth Attorney O'Brien, where she was obviously one of law enforcement's favorite prosecutors in this courthouse. Uh, we then had the honor to serve uh, under O'Brien um, as a judge. And it's amazing, and we seem to say this quite often, but this is a case where it is so true, especially in this circuit, um, where we had a judge that the law enforcement still loved to go in front of, but yet the defense bar felt the same way. And that is a really tricky thing. I don't know how you ever pulled that off. <laughs> but, but both sides appreciated it. Um, so I'll tell you just a brief story of... of how we got here today, and I won't tell all the details because I'll never tell all the details, uh, but becoming a judge is difficult, and unfortunately sometimes politics is involved in it. Um, and a lot of people don't like how Virginia chooses judges, and it is a flawed system, but quite frankly it's probably one of the best systems in the country, much as we say democracy is a flawed system, but yet it's the best government type of government that mankind has been able to create. When this whole process started, Judge O'Brien had the support, the full support, of every member of the Prince William delegation, House, Senate, Democrat, Republican, it didn't matter. She had the full, wholehearted support. 
But as many, as, as many of you know, and especially you judges in this type of process, sometimes things just aren't meant to be. And I warned Judge O'Brien, you do everything you can. You talk to anyone you can to get this judgeship, but do not get your hopes up. Never get your hopes up for a judgeship because so many things can happen. There's so many twists and turns and angles and stuff no one could even see coming that could prevent someone from becoming a judge. And well, that's what happened. Uh, judge O'Brien, Circuit Court Judge O'Brien, was not to be a member of the Court of Appeals this year. It wasn't meant to be. So it seemed. Much like the state legislature, when something is absolutely dead on arrival, sometimes it becomes law. Sometimes, uh, <laughs> then again, sometimes things that you absolutely know will never, you know, that you know are going to become law, you know it's going to pass, it's the easiest bill in the world, next thing you know it's laid on the table in a subcommittee, it never becomes law. And uh, I can't even remember the date, but I'll never forget the day this past winter. We were in the middle of session, most committee assignments had been completed in session at this point. It was a very busy day on the House floor. As the majority whip, I mean, I, I was very busy because, you know, I'm supposed to guide several issues either to be killed or to be passed, sometimes by very narrow margins. And some things happened. Some things happened that I'm not going to go into and I will never tell anyone in this room, but things happened where I was able to leave the House floor for a few minutes and call Judge O'Brien's cell phone probably three or four times leaving messages, um, knowing she's probably sitting on the bench uh, in front of a courtroom. So I finally call her clerk or her the office and say, this is an emergency. I, I described who I am. No, this isn't a crazy person. Uh, well, it is a crazy person, but it is Delegate Miller uh, calling from Richmond, and it is an emergency. It is urgent that you get Judge O'Brien to go into a recess. I must talk with her today. And the reason being is there was an opportunity after we had already spoken and said, Judge O'Brien, I'm sorry, I don't think it's going to happen this year. There was, an, there was an opening. The problem and the reason why it was so urgent that I talked to her that day is the joint courts committees on which I serve, with the House and Senate, had not certified uh, then Circuit Court Judge O'Brien to be uh, suited to go on to the Court of Appeals. She had not been certified. So... For our plan to work, she had to be certified that day within the next two hours before session ended. Otherwise, our plan that Senator Colgan and Delegate Minshew, myself, Senator Stewart, Senator Reeves had put into play. And luckily, one of my former colleagues, the deputy over here, drove her because I said, uh, Judge O'Brien, I don't care. Risk getting a ticket. Get <laughs> down here now. Uh, so luckily my former sergeant, who's now on the uh, police department, was happy to drive Judge O'Brien down to Richmond. She came before the courts committee and was certified, and you know the rest of the story. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is a case, and, and sometimes, sometimes, not all the time, sometimes the best don't get the judgeships, sometimes. But this is one of those cases where it wasn't, where that didn't happen. This was that case where the best was almost over overlooked. The best almost didn't make its way through that unfortunate political process that we have to deal with in Richmond. And the best got a real fast drive down to Richmond, <laughs> got certified, and got voted uh, to become a member of the Court of Appeals. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, you know, it is a loss to Prince William County. It's a loss to this courthouse. Uh, but as a member of the state legislature, I'm proud to say that this is an absolute gain to the Commonwealth of Virginia, that we're losing her. So, uh, Your Honor, if I may uh, approach the bench and present you uh, with the commission for Judge O'Brien. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Delegate Miller, with your permission, I will read the commission that you have handed the court. This is a commission that has been duly signed by the governor and the secretary of the Commonwealth, and it's dated uh, February the 1st, 2015. Um, Commonwealth of Virginia, to all to whom these presents shall come, greeting. 
Know ye that from special trust and confidence reposed in his fidelity, our governor, by virtue of authority vested in him by law, hereby commissions the Honorable Mary Grace O'Brien as a judge of the Court of Appeals of Virginia to serve a term of eight years commencing February 1, 2015. In testimony whereof our said governor hath hereunto signed his name and affixed the lesser seal of the Commonwealth at Richmond this 23rd day of January 2015 and in the 239th year of the Commonwealth. Congratulations. Now, by way of further introduction of the judge designate, the court recognizes John D. Whittington, Esquire. May it please the court. It was only a few short weeks ago that I got a phone call from Mary Grace O'Brien, and she said, John, I've got the greatest news ever. I've been chosen for a judge's dream job. I said, that's super, Mary Grace. Tell me about it. She said, well, I'm going to get to work with some of the finest judges this Commonwealth has from throughout the state. My subject matter will be limited, and I'm going to get to travel. Every circuit court judge in this state at one point or another dreams of this job, and it's happened to me. I said, that's fantastic. And she said, but I want you to do a favor for me. I'm calling because they're going to have a swearing-in ceremony for me on June 5th. And at the swearing-in ceremony, I'd like for you and Alan Newcomb to come and say a few words on my behalf. And I hesitated, and she picked up on that. And she said, what's the matter? <clears throat> I said, well, Mary Grace, you and I have been friends for over 30 years. and There's not much I wouldn't do for you that you asked me to do. But and she said, but what? I said, but I don't think the McCammon group has a swearing-in ceremony. <laughs> she laughed just like that. I waited for my face to stop turning red, and I said, uh, of course. I, I, she goes, I'm getting a job with the Court of Appeals of Virginia, and it is a dream job. <laughs> and I am here, and there is a swearing-in ceremony. And while today, in my mind, is a day for congratulations, it's also a day for thanks. And I'd like to start my comments by thanking our legislative delegation for making this dream come true. And I'd like to thank especially Jackson Miller for spearheading this movement. And our offices are next to one another, so I expect to hear the whole story someday. <laughs> Senator Colgan, I, I want to give you special thanks, too. You've supported Mary Grace O'Brien ever since she's wanted to become a judge. You supported her in 2001 when she became a judge of our juvenile court. You supported her in 2008 when she made history in this county and was the first woman circuit court judge. And you supported her here today. And that deserves thanks. I want to thank Mary Grace's family. There's a lot of you here. I think you have the first few rows of the whole side over there. <laughs> Good Irish Catholic families. <laughs> but I also want to thank Kevin Casey, Mary Grace's husband, my good friend, and your children, Monica and Patrick. I want to thank you for supporting your mom and your wife. And I want to thank you for the personal sacrifices that I'm sure, being a family member of a judge, you had to go through. I would like, at this time, Judge Huff, permission to address the Court of Appeals. Yes, sir. May it please the Court. I should have said this earlier. My name is John Whittington, and I've been a member of the Prince William County Bar since 1981. Mary Grace O'Brien has been my friend since 1985. Judge O'Brien is the third member of the Prince William County Bar to be elevated to your court. First was Judge, now Justice, Leroy F. Millett, Jr., who sits on our Supreme Court. Second is your current colleague and also my friend, Judge Rossi D. Austin, Jr., and now Judge Mary Grace O'Brien. If I could make a sports analogy, 
if your court were a Major League Baseball team, you're getting a third first round draft choice <laughs> from Prince William County. And as Alan said, we are very proud of that. I, I can also tell you this. Mary Grace O'Brien is the type of judge and the kind of person that very soon you will all be happy to call your colleague. More importantly, at least to me, Mary Grace O'Brien is the type of judge and the kind of person that you will all soon be honored to call your friend. And for that, I say congratulations to you. Last, but certainly not least, I say congratulations to you, Judge O'Brien. You have excelled at everything you've ever done professionally. You excelled from 1983 to 1985 when you were Justice, the, the Supreme Court Justice's law clerk. You excelled from 1985 to 2001 when you worked for Paul Ebert. From 2001 to 2008, you excelled as a juvenile court judge. Two of those years, you were our chief judge. From 2008 until just recently, you excelled as a circuit court judge. Two of those years, you were our chief judge. I am so very happy for you, and I believe you truly have gotten your dream job, and I wish you nothing but the best. Thank you, Mr. Whittington. The court now recognizes uh, Kevin F. Casey Esquire for the presentation of a motion to administer the oath. Thank you, Your Honor. May it please the court, Mr. Chief Judge and judges of this honorable court, I am honored at this time to move Judge Designate Mary Grace O'Brien be deemed qualified to take the oath of office as a judge of the Court of Appeals of Virginia. Thank you, sir. Your motion is granted. <laughs> Unanimously. <Yeah. laughs> and now to administer the oath of office, uh, the court recognizes the Honorable Herman A. Wisenot, Jr., retired judge of the 31st Judicial Circuit, to offer remarks and then administer the oath with uh, the family assisting. Judge Wisenup. Thank you. I, I, Mary Grace O'Brien, do solemnly swear that I will support, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Virginia, that I will faithfully and impartially, and that I will faithfully and impartially discharge all of the duties incumbent upon me discharge all of the duties incumbent upon me as a judge of the Court of Appeals of Virginia as a judge of the Court of Appeals of Virginia according to the best of my ability according to the best of my ability so help me God, so help me God. thank you calls on our colleague, Judge Alston, to uh, extend a special invitation. Mr. Chief Judge and my other good friends of the Court of Appeals of Virginia, it gives me great pleasure to invite to the bench the 37th judge of the Court of Appeals of Virginia, the third individual from the great confines of Prince William <laughs> County and the 31st Judicial Circuit, an individual of impeccable character and intellect, my good and dear friend for over 25 years, the Honorable Mary Grace O'Brien. Please be seated. Thank you. 
I'm a bit overwhelmed. Uh, Sister Cecilia, thank you for a beautiful invocation. And I thank all the Benedictine sisters of Bristow, Virginia, for their prayers and friendship. John and Alan, I appreciate and don't deserve your kind remarks. And I'm grateful to Senator Colgan and Delegate Miller for speaking today and for their support. I want them to know, along with the other members of the House and the Senate, that I appreciate the responsibility that they have placed in me. And I will, do my, I will work hard to do a good job as a judge of the Court of Appeals of Virginia. For 30 years, this courthouse has been my home. And I know that some of my former colleagues on the circuit court bench wonder, as you sometimes do with an adult child, when I'm going to move out and get my own place. <laughs> I want to tell you, I have a lease. And I should, by Christmas, certainly, I will be in my own office. 30 years ago, I was incredibly lucky to be hired by Paul Ebert as an assistant Commonwealth attorney. Paul took a chance on me. I had no trial experience and not a lot of life experience. Paul was a wonderful employer and mentor, and it was a tremendous office. I worked for many years with excellent attorneys, many of whom went on to become judges, two of the best trial lawyers in Virginia, Rick Conway and Jim Willett. It was my great good fortune to serve on the juvenile and circuit court benches in Prince William County. And on both courts, my colleagues were bright, thoughtful, dedicated jurists on the bench who became dear friends off the bench. In circuit court, I was also lucky enough to work with the retired judges who would substitute for us and were generous with their time and knowledge and experience. I have benefited immeasurably from the assistance of my administrative aide, Sandy, and my law clerks, both my current law clerks, Laurel and Charity, and my former law clerks, I refer to all of my law clerks as the brain trust. <laughs> and I am also very appreciative of the statewide bar endorsement. To have a vote of confidence from the lawyers who appear before me was a tremendous gift. The work of the courthouse is not just done by the lawyers and the judges. There are two other agencies which certainly deserve recognition and thanks from me. The courtroom clerks who worked with me in both juvenile and circuit court were hardworking, helpful folks who saved me from many math errors, among other mistakes. <laughs> I am thankful for all of them, especially Debbie Clark, who worked with me most recently and basically did everything right. I likewise, the sheriff's deputies who have served as my bailiffs over the years have been extraordinarily helpful. From my first deputy who, with whom I worked, John Paul Colbert, who came up from Florida for today, to my most recent deputy, Joe Kearns, who is also a very good driver, very safe, <laughs> somewhat swift, but safe driver. The sheriffs in this, uh, the sheriff's deputies throughout the courthouse are attentive and professional, and we are lucky to have them. I have to take a moment and thank my relatively new colleagues on the Court of Appeals of Virginia. They have come here today from Virginia Beach, from Lynchburg, from Fredericksburg, from Richmond, and from Lebanon, Virginia. And for those of you who don't travel much, Lebanon is right near Abingdon. <laughs> so they have each, each and every one of my colleagues has been incredibly welcoming, collegial, and helpful to me as I have joined the court, and I appreciate them. As judges, we are not important, but we make important decisions, decisions which affect people's lives, their liberty, their livelihood. It is imperative, in my view, therefore, that as judges, we are courteous and professional with the lawyers and litigants who appear before us that we exercise judicial restraint and apply the law as it is written, not as we would like it to be, and that we give every case the time and attention it deserves. It is hard work worth doing well, and when done right, it can consume us, which is why it's important to have an identity other than that of judge. As you've heard today, I have a big family, and I have many friends who have come some distance to be here today, and I appreciate the gift of your presence here with me today. I can't acknowledge all of them because I will forget someone and get in trouble. <laughs> Finally, I want to thank my husband and my family. 
My husband, Kevin Casey, has been a constant support in both this and every professional endeavor I have undertaken. And he has the unique ability to know when to be encouraging and when to keep his mouth shut. <laughs> it's a gift. <laughs> My daughter, Monica, who is just finished her second year in college, is as beautiful on the inside as she is on the outside. She is one of the kindest, most empathetic, empathetic people I know, and every day with Monica is a good day. And then there's Patrick. <laughs> Patrick, who is 16, taught me an important life lesson when he was about five. We were walking somewhere, and I was trying to get from point A to point B, and I became a little impatient with Patrick. And I asked him, Patrick, why can't you just walk? Why do you have to meander over to the curb, climb on the little wall behind the sidewalk, run your hand along the bicycle rack, and hop every third step? He looked at me dead serious and said, Mom, you got to have a little fun in life. <laughs> he has been reminding me that by word and action, and I am grateful to him for that. On that note, I hope that you will all be able to join us at the reception so I can thank you personally but please know how very much I appreciate each and every one of you being here today. Thank you. Judge O'Brien, the Court of Appeals of Virginia welcomes you to the bench. We're, we're pleased to have you with us. And ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the special session of the Court of Appeals of Virginia. Uh, the court is adjourned, and a reception will follow at the old Manassas Courthouse. Thank you. All rise.